From all walks of life, recruits from around the nation take on the grueling 13 weeks of training to become a Marine. They're physically and mentally broken down, then built back up as our nation's defenders. Almost a United States Marine, and I can't wait till I see you guys, and I miss y'all and love y'all. That's Christopher Guijado's message to his family back home in Midland. Born and raised. Despite the countless challenges he faces, it's being away from home that's the hardest. Ready to go back home to good old West Texas, that's for sure. Meanwhile, his family carries on with their weekly barbecue dinners, but Chris is always on their mind. Padre, pedimos por Chris, allá donde él está y todos sus amigos. And when he's home, we, we cook together. The recruit's anxious mother says this is her son's dream. As soon as he turned 18, three days later, he was in that office signing up. The only contact the family has had with him are through these letters. I feel I won the lottery. I just got a letter from my son. I've written letters to my family and actually the other day was able to call my family for travel arrangements. But before their long-awaited reunion, Chris is required to take the final test. Let's go, run! 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 The crucible is a three-day test of fortitude. Recruits take to the mountains of Camp Pendleton. The crucible, is, it's tough, but it's, I know it's going to be worth it. They are pushed to the point of exhaustion with little sleep or food, carrying nearly 40 pounds in combat gear. Fun! Finally, a 12-mile hike up the steep side of a mountain called the Reaper. On the way down, they can barely stay on their feet. But they carry on, knowing they're just moments away from the words they've been longing to hear. Congratulations, Marine. Because right now, every single one of you are part of the most feared fighting organization on this planet. And that title, that title was earned. Ring, 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 ring. That was the scene yesterday in Midland, Odessa, Texas. I'm telling you right now, it got wild. And wild it was. Charles Terry, owner of a roofing company, says this is the worst wind damage he has seen in a long while. It was a calamity of flying asphalt and, and composition shingles and metal roofs and you name it. Many West Texans are cleaning up after strong winds swept through the Permian Basin. This roof will cost the owner over $700,000. And this is a small building. Ironically, this building belongs to the Farmers Insurance Group. This yesterday was mostly homes and stuff like that. Eric Easley, an insurance agent, says they can now relate with many West Texans as the agency collects dozens of insurance claims. From uplifted roofs and uprooted trees to all kinds of flying objects, such as this trampoline, damaging property. We do have dead trees out there and getting those down and out of the way where they don't end up necessarily on your home or your vehicle or even on your neighbor's property. We may have to remove this entire part right here. But Charles Terry says let it blow as he hammers down on job security. Fix it, watch it blow off, fix it again, watch it blow off. West Texas weather. Paso Community Foundation restored this theater seven years ago, and it had originally been a movie house. I used to come when I was a kid. I we used to uh, watch uh, Cantinflas movies here now in Plaza Theater back in the 60s, 70s. They were going to tear it down, and in fact, Rita Rome uh, Moreno came out and uh, helped out, uh, helped the uh, foundation to save the uh, Plaza Theater. I came here many, many years ago uh, to help many other people save the theater which was supposed to become a parking lot and that just it's the kind of community to whom it meant a great deal not to have that happen welcome to the plaza theater enjoy the show there are very few film festivals dedicated to classic film we're showing classic films and instant classic films and we're showing independent local filmmakers and we've got concerts from local original musicians People have, for very little money, the opportunity to come to a world-class performing arts facility.
that belongs to them belongs to the city of El Paso and enjoy some of the best movies ever made. There is a magic to sitting in a room with 2,000 other people and laughing when you're supposed to laugh and crying when you're supposed to cry and having a real community experience that bonds you with your neighbor. I just love the concept that old films are being brought back for a new audience, an old audience as well, but this old audience brings along the younger people, which is so important. I've noticed recently that a lot of young people have been showing up at my appearances. That's new. They think they've heard so much about me from their fathers and their mothers and their aunts and their uncles and their uncles. Enjoy. Well, I would say my parents, my grandparents all like these movies, so they bring me here. I enjoy them as well. The audience last night was just fabulous. It was every single age. There were some very old people there. There were some middle-aged people. There were some uh, people in their teens and their 20s. And then there were very young people. Thrilling and very exciting. And it, was, it really touched me. Eighty percent of the beds in South Sudan are filled with people who are sick with simple diseases caused by dirty water, easily corrected by clean water. So you can imagine what that means. Your, what meager income you have goes to medicine or hospital bills. Uh, you can't make it to school. Uh, you can't get out and work. It just knocks people out of the game. It doesn't give them a chance to even start. People walk for over 10 miles in looking for water. You walk for three to four hours to go and look for water. When you bring a clean water well close to home, all kinds of uh, impacts you see. Illness goes down. Spending on medicine goes down. Ability to go to school because you're not spending all day uh, going after water, which tends to be uh, a, a girl's job. So it keeps girls out of school. You see communities and neighbors healthy within months. They can begin to think maybe there is a future here. Stungate Fellowship partnered with an organization called Water is Basic. And they have by far been the leading water well drilling agency in South Sudan. Over the last four years, they've drilled almost 500 water wells. Some people say, hey, do you preach the gospel before you give water? I say no. We preach the gospel with water. These water wells are given for free in very desperate areas, and they're given in the love of Jesus and the name of Jesus. People ask, why do you drill a well here for us? We have not paid for it. We said, because Jesus loves you. It has been a tool to tell people the love of Christ, and it has also united people across different faiths. Even Muslims and Christians go and chat and laugh together at the water point, collecting water. Water has given people hope. Children who had no opportunity have been educated and now see themselves as potential leaders in the country, and they love the Lord. There's a, a huge heart of humility and gratefulness for all that, that uh, the church has done for them. <laughs> Stonegate uh, Fellowship Church, to know that what they have done, they have put deep into our hearts the love of Christ with all their support. What's amazing to me is how well known the name of Stonegate is here. Stonegate isn't identified as the organization Stonegate. Stonegate is identified as a, a core group of believers in West Texas that know us and love us. We are one. We are all united in the blood of Jesus Christ. And I'm really very grateful. Your impact here is, it's almost immeasurable to me. It's hard for me to even mention. You probably are the most significant investor in the work of uh, what I've seen in South Sudan as a church over the last 10 years. And as the body of Christ, I'm excited how we can step into other places, whether that's Romania, whether that's Sudan, whether that's going to be China or India, wherever that might be, where we can take resources we're blessed with, bless others with those resources and see what God does through them. All that has happened from government level to the local church, to the grassroots, the community in general, Stonegate has made a huge impact. And I will keep on telling the next generation, 